like this dude. He's a household favorite here in Australia. Please give it up for Lawrence Mooney! Excellent. How are we? Good. Let's talk about Tony. I think we should talk about Tony. I got a little bit, oh, someone's gone, oh. <laughs> Welcome to the member of the Liberal Party in the room. <laughs> I got a little bit frightened earlier in the year because uh, Tony's approval rating almost went through the floor and I was thinking, please don't sack Tony. Don't sack Tony. I've worked too hard on this comedy invective. What am I gonna do? I've even got my lizard impersonation down, Pat. Because he has got the tight skin, hasn't he? As, ah. The tongue's always ready. You almost expect it to roll out of his mouth and flick a fly off Bill Shorten's forehead. Ah. And, you know, anger isn't funny in retrospect. If I was up here going, remember when Tony was a bit of a fuckwit? You'd be going, move on, mate, and just do your Malcolm Turnbull impersonation. And I would. I would do it for you. I'd, uh, I'd be up here doing Malcolm. And, and I'd tell you about the time that Lucy and I went to the Bondi Icebergers. <laughs> and I'd be, I'd be saying things like metadata. And because I enjoy teas and, and Australians say metadata. And I say metadata. And I'd be saying things like clearly. And sometimes I'd stop speaking and just freeze. Because people enjoy looking at my head. <laughs> But I really do enjoy speaking and using all the words. And it reminds me of when uh, Lucy and I went swimming in the ocean. And... <laughs> because vowels are good. And afterwards, I took a shower. Because I like O.W. Shower. It can go on for a long time. And I took a shower with the nude men and boys. And um, it's just egalitarian. You can't tell a man's role in life when he's nude in the shower. And I just enjoy myself. And like I said on, on election night 2007, it's, it's the democracy of the surf. And that's what I like. I like saying things like that. And I also like catching a train across the Harbour Bridge so I can say, I caught a train <laughs> across the Harbour Bridge. And if you want to talk like me, and obviously you like listening to me, all you have to say is fire hydrant. Um, <laughs> I tied my dog to a fire hydrant. Let's try that tonight on the count of three. One, two, three. Fire hydrant. See, you've got it down. And um, you're really enjoying it. And I enjoy speaking too. And it's something that you enjoy about me, and that is that I can speak, unlike Tony. <laughs> and then Lucy and I go home and we open a nice bottle of San Gervese and look at our priceless art collection. And I think, what a great country this is. It really is a great country to be a powerful white man in. Powerful, powerful <laughs> white man. And if you're going to say a W, say the H before it. A powerful white man. And then I just stare into the middle distance. You know, I say every letter in every word except my own name. I just say Malcolm. I don't pronounce the first L. Have you ever picked that up? I say Malcolm. And just leave the rest to you. So... <laughs> You like that, don't you? Say fire hydrant again. Just really enjoy being alive. Drink Italian wine and shut the fuck up. <laughs> now, last year was a, uh, a year for some crazy aircraft disaster. Uh, first of all, there was MH370 and that disappeared and we still haven't found that. And that really freaked us all out. And then there was MH17, which was a horrible tragedy blown out of the air. And then there was that aircraft disaster between Christmas and New Year, where we didn't bother learning the flight number, because we, we, we'd learned to already. And uh, can we just call it the Asia Airlines one, really? Come on, we've got MH370 and MH17. Do we have to learn, it's got a Q in it and four numbers. Do we really have to learn that one? And same with German wings. It's like, we're not learning any more flight numbers because it does kind of strike at our hearts. Most of us are on our way to the Gold Coast with the missus and the kids, and we're flying Tiger. And <laughs> it's not really an airline. They don't have flight numbers. They don't even land in an airport. They just land in a paddock and poor people just run for the plane. 
and just get on it. <laughs> but when there is an aircraft disaster, it strikes deeply at our middle class hearts. Okay, because even though we love this country, the moment we have a spare $7,000, we are out of here. <laughs> we are gone. And I say strikes deeply at our middle class hearts and everyone freezes a little bit. Oh, I don't want to be middle class. Don't call me middle class. You are middle class. By virtue of the fact that you have paid for entertainment, you have come into a city and you've paid $7,000 in parking, you are middle class. <laughs> You've got disposable income, and it's okay to be middle class tonight. The poor aren't here, okay? <laughs> They're not here, mate. They're a long way from here. They're chain smoking, just screaming at one another, standing in hot gravel. <laughs> Feels good, live it up. They're not here, okay? They are the problem, all right? You guys are. There's heaps of them. Do they have the same gestation period as us, the poor? Or do they have them in litters and poor women just lie on their side with multiple boobs, just come on, get in it. You're catching on. What the fuck are you doing, mate? No, seriously. What are you doing? Essentially, you are isolating a minority part of society for the entertainment and amusement of the majority. This is the same ignorance that informs racism, you fucking imbecile. These people should be ashamed of themselves. You should be up there doing cheeky chin jokes, you fucking asshole. No, I'm serious. Haven't you heard of intergenerational poverty? My father was poor and his father and his father's father. It's impacted on my health and my ability to pass on a legacy to my family, you fucking idiot! <laughs> no, don't laugh at him, he's an arsehole. Food for thought. Um, <laughs> don't worry, they're not here. I'm Lawrence Mooney, see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, give us a